Hey guys, SoulStreaker457 here, and today I'll be starting a new Kerbal Space Program series. Um, I've had a few people request that I do this again, so I thought, hey, why not? So, I've started a new career, um, career mode. And, well, let's get started. At the moment, I have named my company SSES dot inc stands for Soul Searcher Exploration Space Incorporated. So let's start earning ourselves some science. First we'll take a command pod and see what we can do with this and the parts we have in the map. Have a couple of fuel tanks on it. Earn ourselves some science. fuel tank on there, why not? Let's be adventurous with this. Remember we're looking to get as much science as quickly as possible. Need a parachute of course. Wanna bring our guys back safely. Okay. So let's just call this Stands for low orbit. Next, orbit science module. And let's go ahead and save that. And let's launch it. The uh, updates have added asteroids and stuff. We will have to be extra careful of that in future. But for now, we can uh, get this going as quickly as possible. So we've got Jebediah on the uh, launch pad, ready to go. So, first of all, why don't we take a crew report? We'll transmit that back and take a little bit of our power. And let's see. I made a bit of a boo-boo. See what I forgot to do is I forgot to sort out the stages. So in doing that, it launched the parachute at the same time as the rocket. So here, let us uh, drag this down. Let's try that again, shall we? <laughs> Let's move that back. And let us launch. Very nice cockpit view we got here. Just trying to get up as high as we possibly can. I did that rather inefficiently, I would admit, but I would like to keep as much of this as possible. So we'll get up a little bit further, perhaps into the thinnest part of the atmosphere. Just uh, try and get as far as we possibly can. Yep, 
Yep, now we're up in the thinnest part of the atmosphere. And it looks like we're slowing down even further. But we may even just make it out of the atmosphere just with this simple three fuel tank one engine rocket and look down here Jebediah is having the time of his life I think I would too I mean who wouldn't want to go into space but uh, it's rather experimental risky flight he's a madman truly a madman I salute you sir so uh, we're just getting up into the upper reaches of the atmosphere here and it looks like we're about to start coming down yep there we go and there's no more science we can uh, get from the atmosphere, this part of the atmosphere anyway and I keep pressing escape and I really don't know why so why don't we see if we can move ourselves a bit I know we're not going to get anything drastic, especially since we had no horizontal momentum whatsoever, but at least we might be able to get some small amount. We also want to make ourselves as wide as possible in the atmosphere. Thank god there isn't a deadly re-entry mod on this, just so we can uh, slow ourselves down as fast as possible. no point but I'm not going to be able to get anything else and there's the moon over there can we see anything else uh, no no we cannot I've always loved the scenery of Kerbal Space Program it's beautiful and, uh, while we're up here we can see the other uh, landing strip over on the islands over there and there is a pyramid off in that direction we got some Icelandic mountains a lot of curb in this water it's quite similar to earth in that way I guess that's why it was made but uh, I don't know space has always excited me and as a result this game attracted my attention very early on so I'm going to go ahead and open the parachute now and hopefully it slows us down enough but doesn't actually rip off if it does that, Jebediah, I'm afraid you're going to an early grave. And you'll turn out like the crew of Apollo 1. Always at the first stage did we lose someone. I'm hoping perhaps is uh, recording my audio here. But uh, if it doesn't, well, I will just feel like an idiot. That's the magic of editing for you. Yay! I keep it down, it's quite uh, late where I am at the moment, it's about half past one in the morning, so yeah. And I uh, watched the Brazil v Germany game earlier, and that was, well that wasn't even a game, to be honest. Germany destroyed Brazil so badly you couldn't even think they were playing. I mean, by the end of the 88th minute they had scored seven goals at least. I didn't watch past that point, I didn't watch the extra time, but uh, still it was slaughter. So anyway, our uh, parachutes opened up a bit and just slowed us right down. And when we get to the last 500 meters it will open fully and hopefully it won't rip off the Ripple Partner spacecraft. No, no, it didn't cheer off, so it looks like Jeb's coming home safely. Turn off the SAS control, it's probably been draining our power sources. Oh, yeah, look at that. I haven't even more local propellant, so I don't know how that worked out. But, uh, now well. So we've got. Well, we enjoyed this nice uh, slow ride back down to the surface. Just a few meters away from the launch pad there. 
We can take a look at the Magnificent Space Center. Got the Space Planes Factory, the hangar. You've got the vertical, vertical assembly building and the tracking station, science and recruitment centers. I bet Jeff's just happy to be back on the ground. Anyway, make our top down with just the engine blowing up, and that is absolutely fine. We can afford to lose that. So, let us uh, get a crew report from here. And recover this vessel. I gained a total of 15 signs from that. So that means I can get just a couple of basic parts. really need is uh, to unlock the laboratory but that's going to be a long time yeah that's all the way over here so I need 15 sides to unlock anything else 20 there 18 there okay so we've unlocked our first parts just from that simple flight and it didn't take very long it was very beneficial to us so that was cool We'll nickname that the Mark 1. There we should uh, probably do that. Now let's make the Mark 2. Keep the same basic design. Why change what works well? But we'll scrap this part now. We'll put on two of the larger tanks. The same engine. Now we want to make sure we've got some uh, science on this. So, what I want to do is actually just add a small fuel tank. get push us into orbit so and it also means get as much science as possible okay so this will be the mark two just uh that set up like that and let us test this out see if it'll work so so far it been good going back up as the veteran of the Kerbal L uh, low orbit science mark one so we'll be doing the same old job again so godspeed to you yeah? and we've launched as you can see we've definitely got enough force Seven sides for keeping that. Let's keep that one. We get 2.1 sides after that. So let's recycle that and we'll be able to reuse that one later. Let's see if Jeff has a crew report here. Yes, he does not. So it's just a small sailing up until uh, we get to our open air atmosphere. some form of logical physics. If any of you know any other games like this, please uh, feel free to comment below and tell me if there's anything else you'd like me to show you. I also play some uh, on 2, any game notes to come with that. I've got Iron 3, uh, Daisy Standalone, I should start up wearing some of that soon, and some uh, Daisy Every Pop Mod, and a little bit of everything really. Uh, let you know on my 
my channel what releases are coming out when and you guys can decide for yourself what you want to watch so I'm going to start tilting here on to my right hand side so I can start gaining some altitude also some horizontal I realise that I'm definitely not going to make it to orbit this, uh, this attempt but I can at least try my best and get as high as I can second I'm gonna cut the engines just let it rise itself make it a bit more efficient and Jeb seems to have calmed down slightly he's not feeling so cocky anymore well knowing him it's only because he doesn't know what's happening he doesn't like flying diagonally apparently but it looks like we're definitely gonna make it out in the atmosphere at this time um, and when we do, we can start getting some real science. Kerbin's off atmosphere. The goo seems to be getting very cold now. Well, it's space. It's not exactly surprising. So just give it a little burn again, just to boost it back up. And we are officially out of the atmosphere. And if we weren't going so uh, up so fast, I would honestly um, attempt an EVA report, but I won't do that until we get into a steady orbit, which will hopefully be in the next run. And I know Jeff would be even more comfortable with that. So uh, still counting as the upper atmosphere. Let's see if we can burn the atmosphere. There you go, and that music indicates that we are now in fact in space. And with all of our science pods open, and we've collected all the data. We transmit that, probably take up most of our power. Yep. I'm afraid I still can't risk a uh, EVA report, but uh, hey, at least we know where we are. Curving over there, and that's the uh, that's the other landing strip. So. Where's the where's the window? There it is. Roll the server. To the window is facing the planet. Might as well get a good view while we're uh, tumbling back down to Kerbin. To uh, spin wildly out of control there. Yeah. And just there, that is the landing strip. Large enough to be seen from space. <laughs> you better not open that hatch. So, currently the SAS system seems to be working fine and the staging worked perfectly. 
Might as well turn off the SAS now, it's not needed. I'm slowing down exponentially. Eventually picking up more and more velocity. And the radar altitude has hit its uh, max. Vertical speed is only up in the hundreds. We'll be coming down soon. At the moment that stops slowing down and it's decreasing. Or should I say the moment it starts speeding up again is when we'll be heading down. If you look closely it's slowly dropping. Now it'll be increasing. Yep, well, it's starting to happen. We're technically in orbit right now, but uh, I don't think Jebediah cares. But at least what he must be seeing is beautiful. I mean, look at that. Let's uh, get a better view, shall we? Yeah. Is it happening? Yep, there we go. We're starting our full back to work. Or should I say, Kurth? Yep, yep, there you go. Now reach the down position. Now start increasing faster and faster and faster. And now I'm not sure what this is, but it's starting to run backwards. Maybe it's a myelometer. You've got the throttle there. Might as well bring that down. Let's uh, roll the ship over and just take a look at space while we're up here. Look at the thin blue line. All those different galaxies and stars. Uh, I believe that's meant to be uh, a replica of M38 aka the Andromeda Galaxy kind of looks like that this whole game was designed on the Hubble Ultra Deep Field but uh, if it was, it was a very good basis Hubble Ultra Deep Field was a beautiful image so let's see if we can find... And there it is there is the landing strip and that means the Space Center should be there are we getting our full back into the atmosphere? Falling at 770 meters per second. The altitude meter is still above. So let us take a look exactly where we are. Hmm. Looks like a we're going to be heading for a watery landing, at least. Hopefully that will be nice and soft. The engine will most likely break, um, given the extra weight. I should have probably added a uh, extra uh, decoupler here, so at least there was less weight. And really I would have done one here but you wanted to keep the science so we may have actually lost some of that which would be rather unfortunate hello moon and uh, we're now falling at a thousand meters per second and Kur Jebediah is now having the time of his life again let's uh why don't we make a little bit more interesting for you there buddy since we've now got no horizontal velocity just point you straight down make you slightly more aerodynamic though this would of course in real life kill whoever is inside due to superheating of the atmosphere uh, turning the 
whenever the air particles fly, uh, fly around the ship moving so fast into plasma. Um, essentially what happened to the Challenger rocket. No, not Challenger, Columbia. Challenger was the rocket that blew up. I must admit, even I'm ashamed of myself for getting that wrong. Challenger was the O-ring failure of the SR, uh, right side SRB at the space shuttle, thanks to Norton Thurkoll and NASA both being a little too greedy. And as a result, it cost astronauts lives and even a teacher, Christina Cowliff, if I remember rightly. If you'd like to read more about the Challenger incident, I would recommend reading Riding Rockets by Mr. Uh, R. Mike Mullane. Incredible book talking about NASA and the space program in general in the space shuttle era. And I loved it from start to finish. Now we are coming in way too fast here. Way, 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 way too fast. So I'm going to turn on the side to create as much drag as possible and release the parachute. Make it a drag chute. We're running quite low on our electric charge as you can see but uh, looks like we're going to make it. So don't worry Jeb, you should be safe. Though maybe the science might not survive. You still look happy. Oh, you madman, sir. You madman. Might as well turn off the SAS. Maybe it's wasting the power. Right, and we're coming down at a steady 11.4, which is slightly faster than before, but still. Yes, I do know that time acceleration with large ships could be rather unhelpful. However, this is not a large ship. And get ready for slashdown, people. We are just 180 meters above the sea level. And see the moon just there, high in the sky. And. Looks like we didn't get the science experiments for it. Which, yeah. Which is, uh. Well, it's rather upsetting, but it's not the end of the day. Oh well. Well, let's, uh. quickly buy some research parts. And then, I think that'll be the end of the episode. Hmm. We have 23 research points. Let's go for aerodynamics, why not? Okay, this has been uh, Sorcerer457 here, and I hope to see you next episode. Bye!